Okay. I am in here already, and uh, apparently I am the only one. No audience yet. Yeah, pet the kitty just a little bit. You see a sweet little kitty here. All right. Now. Today, being a Thursday, is not going to be sculpting a miniature. It's going to be making the props that fit in a miniature's hand. Uh, in this case, specifically, it is going to be for spells. Attack spells, shield, whatever. I'm probably going to make about four, maybe five. Uh, it's a little bit more complex than making uh, weapons and, and staves and... And what are you doing here? Yes, you. What are you doing here? Uh, we have feline difficulty. Yeah. Um, this is Carlton. You can tell it's Carlton because he does not have a collar. But yeah. I have yes, I have kitties, and they 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 want to help me with my broadcast sometimes. And this one particularly is often called the. Velcro kitty. No. That. Broadcast issues. First world kitty problems. Anyway. Like I said, today. Get. No. I gotta put you down. Today is going to be making spells. Hmm. By that, I don't mean actually, you know, teaching you how to draw upon the forces of darkness to bend the laws of reality to your will. No. Um, making little props to fit on figures to represent them casting a spell. You know, not you yourself casting a spell. If I, if I could cast spells, I'd be rich. I'd go straight to the Amazing Randy say, Hey, I heard about your million dollar thing. Here. <laughs> Let's test it. <laughs> anyway. Um, so. Let's get down to it. This is going to be... There. 3D Studio Max. And the first one I'm going to start with... Now, this is going to be a lot of going back and forth between 3D Studio Max and ZBrush. There's going to be very little Dev Studio and no printing. What I'm going to do for each of these is I'm going to make a basic geometry. For example, for a shield, it's just a, well, too big for me to show on this camera. A big disc that you know. For the most of the energy bolts, it'll be like a cone, about like yay big, because you don't want the miniature to be huge, this long blast coming out. You just want to just enough to get them point across. And each one is going to be different. I'm thinking I'm going to do a firebolt, a lightning bolt, a lightning bolt, and then some kind of generic swirly twirly energy thingy. So, the first thing that we do, let's zoom in on this clear part. Oh, actually no, let's go over to the, up here. I am going to create a sphere. A sphere. And I want it to where it would basically be in the palm of the hand of the caster when he's done. That's a bit too small for what we're going to do. <coughs> and we're going to make it a little bit bigger. And a little bit too far forward, so we're going to move it there. So that looks kind of like he's hold. It's gonna look like he's holding a basketball. That's still too small because a lot of the detail won't print well from that. And besides, you want your wizard to be powerful. You want him to be looking like he's casting one heck of a fireball. So now well, that's a ball. Yeah. So what? Well, next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna drop it down to sixteen. And we're going to take this portion of it and stretch it out to make it into more of an elongated teardrop shape.
and it looks like I may end up with a bit too big. So, we're going to go ahead and shrink it a little bit. Now, it's not in the perfect spot for his hand, you'll notice. That's because it's easier to model things when they're totally vertical or totally horizontal. We will then bring it back in here and rotate it until it's parallel to the palm. So that the caster would be holding his hand out and whoosh. Okay, let's give it a mesh smooth or two. Because this is going to go straight to ZBrush. File. Export. Selected into 3D Printing Home. Meshes. Props and m spells. And this is going to be Firebolt. Export. Done. Okay, that, that's nice and simple, nice and easy. So, um, uh, hi, I have some viewers. How's it going? Next step is we go ahead and we take it into ZBrush. Hmm, look, there's ZBrush. Well, we don't want to use this star. So what we want to do, I'm going to import the Firebolt. And there it is. Now what we're going to do, I'm going to sculpt on it and make it try do my best to make it look like flame now one way to do this is let's just go ahead and turn the whole thing upside down because that way we'll have a little bit better of a time dealing with it and let's put the stroke over to the side here so I can turn off lazy mouse as I need now the first thing that's going to happen is I'm going to give it some too much. I'm going to give it some slight reshapings. Just so that it's not a perfect teardrop. We're already seeing more of a flamey shape. Now the next thing we're going to do is a tool I really haven't used before on this show we're going to use what's called a snake hook. And there it is, snake hook. The reason being is what this is going to be for is it's going to be basically... drag. That's a bit too strong. Intens lower the intensity, bring the focal shift in tighter. Not, not need to increase the intensity. Okay, yeah, I need to increase the geometry. This is just not enough to work with the uh, snake hook. Lower. And now uh, let's do Yeah, there we go. And we're going to make a whole bunch of basically little smaller flames coming off of it. Because flame, unless it's a small little match, doesn't have just one little point. It's got a whole bunch. So by doing this, we're turning a little fireball into a fireball. Whoop, nope, that went too far. What the snake hook does is it grabs a part of the geometry like you're using a big old hook. And like uh you know just like it says and then stretches it and drags it all right that's enough bits so now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the inflate tool where did i put the inflate tool inflate there it is we're going to shrink this down a bit we're going to shrink down the intensity a bit and just double check nope does not have lazy mouse lazy mouse 
problem is most of these will not print so we grab them and inflate them a bit and we follow them down to give them all a line because flames don't come from nowhere they kinda of follow a little almost organic pattern You'll notice that it's looking less like a flame now, sadly. Well, that's something that we'll deal with here in just a minute. And Now, the one last thing to do is I need to grab the absolute tip. I'm going to grab it with a move topological. What that means is if I just had to move this big and I grab the tip all of it that's down covered by the red circles there would move if I move topological if the base of those aren't within the circle it won't move so we want to kind of move it down just a little bit and we want to focal shift it because we want more of an angular stretched out and yeah Now we frame and we have that. Let's go ahead, let's use the slash brush and put in some little valley, in, exaggerate the valleys between these little flames. So let's. The reason for this is it'll make it look a bit more like separate tongues collected into this massive fireball. frame it again to fill the screen. Eh, it's looking all right, but it needs to have some more pop. So what we're going to do, we're going to go back to geometry and we're going to dynamesh it. Now what dynamesh does, as I've said before, you'll notice that some of these polygons are stretched way out, but others are almost perfectly square. Dynamesh retopologizes and blends these polygons so that oh that was way too much let's go ahead and divide it a couple times just to make sure we get as lower there's still long thin polys there now what this did this did get rid of some of our slashes so I'm thinking that may not have been the best choice we're going to try instead one called Z Remesher. Z Remesher also retopologizes, but it does it weighted. What that means is wherever there's a sharp edge, it's more likely to have slightly thinner polygons and slightly more. A broad flat surface will have fewer. So we hit Z Remesher, and what we get is. Well, as we wait. And 1.96 million. Oh, that's going to take a few. And hello. Hi, Cuke. And Brandon and Peach with Knives. And, uh, yeah, that's, and, and, yeah. Now, as we wait, has it finished? No, it's still going. 
I'm gonna get some soda while waiting because it's gonna take a few. And there we go. And yeah, that's a lot fewer polygons. But you'll notice that they're still all relatively even. So what we do now, I'm going to turn off the... Uh, with the slash on, we're going to add this time. Lower the, the strength just a little bit and make it bigger. And what we're going to do is we're going to make some edges along this fire. Oh, that's way too strong still. Make some edges along this fire. Make it look a bit more fierce. Yeah. It'll also help sharpen up the, uh, the points of the uh, tongues. Move. And blurg. Now, the other thing is sharp points, sharp ridges, like what I'm putting onto these flame tongues also help when painting because they grab the brush when you're doing what's called a dry brush which is one of the most common painting techniques and they take the least amount of paint when given a wash which is another one of the most common painting techniques so it helps us emphasize our details Now, I realize that most of you don't have or can't afford ZBrush. It's not a cheap program, especially not anymore, although it does more than earn its keep by the fact that all the... Whoa, a little bit too much there. Whoa. All the uh, updates to date have been free. So, there's a program... It used to be an independent... Uh, software company. It's now actually owned by Pixelogic who makes ZBrush called Sculptress. Sculptress also allows you to sculpt directly on geometry like this. Uh, Blender, which is a free poly modeler, also has a form of sculpting. I do not know how good Blender Sculptor is. I know that Sculptress was good enough for Pixelogic to buy them out, like I said. Now frame. All right, now, there's one other thing we gotta do. Um, I'm gonna use deformation, and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to shrink the X and Z a little bit. Turn off X and Z and turn on Y and lengthen. Oh, that was that's the wrong one. That's bend. And lengthen on the Y. Now, technically, this is how it's currently shaped. But like I said, this is how you'll usually see it on the miniature. Firing off a bolt of fire. Now that's doesn't look like fire. So what we're gonna do is we're going to twist it. Okay. There. That looks a lot more like fire, doesn't it? This is good for if you're doing a fire bolt. Now, the thing is, this will not print well on most machines. Too many bolts. Let's see what happens if we inflate it. Uh, just a bit too much and inflate it just a little. But remember, this is going to be printed on something super tiny. And now we are going to move topological. And the reason for this is because we're going to grab these points and pull them a little bit closer to the core of the... Oh, you know, the core of the flame, because we want them kind of as close to laying up against the core as possible. So that way...
instead of being, you know, little prongs that could cause problems, they become basically just details on the surface that don't require independent supports. And each one of these I've got to change the size of the uh, the brush because they have more or less distance from the core of the flame. Like this one, I'm actually not going to pull it to the core, I'm going to pull it off to one side. <clears throat> now, what I'm going to do after I do this is I'm going to dynamesh it. I'm going to make it super high res and one fused solid object. Then I'm going to go back in. I'm going to redetail some of the edges because they will get lost in this process. And then we'll have our little fire bolt. Okay, and we have just a couple left that we have to do. frame it, zoom out, geometry, and we hit dynamesh again. Let's make it kind of high density, blur zero. Actually, let's divide it a couple times before we do this. Resolution 256, no, let's make that 512. We want it a little bit higher. Dynamesh! Yes. Sorry, I had to undo it there for a second. And we now have 465,000 polygons. And we are going to take the slash tool, and we're going to go back over the outer edges of this flame. OK? Because we want to resharpen them, especially now that they're points on a surface instead of being oh don't do that instead of being prongs that stick out quite a bit let's increase the intensity to seven because five is just not quite enough And this will help make it a bit more fiery. Now, a good way to paint this flame is to do the inverse from what you would normally do for a color. Like something that's red, normally you'd have like a you know, base color of a bright red, a highlight color of like an orange or maybe a pink if you want if you're painting something for like chaos, like Slaneshi. And then a shading color of like a burgundy or maybe a brown if it's a dirty red. With this, instead what you do is you would have a base color of orange, a highlight color of red, and a shading color of yellow. Because, and of course more, ye more yellow the, at the base. Or you would do it blue now, if you want to be a really hot, super hot flame, blue with a almost white shading and a darker, like a royal blue uh, highlighting 
and again the less highlighting towards the base of the flame all right now next thing we need to do is we need to get this down to a manageable poly count right now it's 465,000 polys I saw a priest I don't have time right now to do to do to, to deal with it but I, I will experiment but what we're going to do now is we're going to go back to Z Remesher. And we're going to try it. And it's going to take a while again. And it might cause me to lag. I, I've got a seven-year-old computer. The Don thing, I swear to God. Seven-year-old computer, five-year-old video card, or four, I don't know. So, yeah. So, grab another swig of soda. You know talk in a goofy voice that sounds like I'm from somewhere totally different from where I am and if it's under 20k I'm happy 21k no not good not good let's make that target size 4 and let's try it again And nineteen four sixty eight. That's good. Uh, it's not very much different, but hey, I said twenty k. All right, now we're going to export this back on top of itself. Normally, you don't want to do that. Normally, you want to have an iterated save. What that means is, this was Firebolt 1. This is Firebolt, you know, once you've worked it in one program, then you work it in another program, it's Firebolt 2. And you work it in another program, it's Firebolt 3. Okay, so you can't see me right now because I've currently got it on ZBrush, but I'm actually now loading it into... Well, actually, let me go ahead and 3D Studio Max. And it resizes all the windows to fit the Firebolt. Now, that's a rather large Firebolt. In fact, it might be a bit too big. So let's go ahead, Effect, Pivot, Center to Object. And we're going to shrink it a bit, just a bit. There, that should be good enough. Now we're also going to go ahead and drag the center up near the top because what we're going to do is we got to make it now parallel to the hand. So 45 degrees should do it. And now when the wizard has his hand up like this, He's got a bolt of flame leaping from his hand. Now we take the pivot and we move the pivot to zero. X is zero. And the reason for this is that we're going to mirror it, a mirror copy, so that we now have a version for each hand. Now we have to reset the transform, and you'll notice that it's now black. And if we made it, you know, if we could only see the back faces, the effectively, this new one is inside out. The reason for that is that when 3D Studio Max basically mirrors something, it doesn't really make a mirror copy. It scales it negative 100%. And so we just flip the normals, and we're back. Okay, collapse all. Now, we're going to save this one. Export selected. And we're going to call this Firebolt our hand, right hand. This is right hand Firebolt. 
and this one we're going to say do the same thing but it's going to be an L left hand save I'll get into loading them onto the figure in Daz Studio in just a little bit. Meanwhile, just the... Well, hey, I also don't have much of a uh, um, sensor on here. Oh, just to show you what I do for those who haven't seen my show before. Okay. I have a figure that I use in Daz Studio. It is original geometry. I've created it myself. And it is an articulated human shape that you can see the outline in the red here. But it, because of the way Daz Studio works, it makes it a lot easier to create blend shapes that completely alter the proportions of a figure. Which means my human has a whole bunch of alternate forms uh, from over here to way over there we have a troll ogre elf orc with optional tusks and yeah you can put it at 50 percent to have that half orc reptilian muscular human regular human deep one dwarf goblin gnome and halfling and they mix and match what that means is <clears throat> Let's say I wanted kind of a stumpier, chubbier, more muscular troll. I would take troll, add in a bit of dwarf, and then tweak the muscular until he's big enough to where he looks a bit less wiry. And so I can... You know, th that's my figures. And also, because of the way that it handles it, the ogre and the troll, if I put a weapon in their hands, it scales up with them. On the other hand, if I put a great sword in the hands of the uh, the halfling way over there, he'll be like, Ah, what's this? So, that is our base figure. Now, what we got to do is we got to decide what we're going to do next. Do we want to do the lightning bolt? The arcane, mystical, just miscellaneous bolt? Or do we want to do the shield barrier? Anyone? 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 Oh, well, I'm at it. Well, I'm thinking about it. I'm going to go ahead and make the note that I am live on, on, on the... 3D printing miniatures. Oh, where am I? Hmm. Okay, sculpting magic spell props now save okay so lightning bolt or arcane bolt or shield what should I do next because I can tell you that each one's gonna have a different thing each one's gonna have a different problem lightning bolt for example will probably be very difficult to print and it's, I'm kind of questioning whether I should actually make it or not. Okay. Lightning bolt it is. So, again, I'm going to make it vertical. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start with just a simple line. A zigzaggedy... Actually... line and then I'm going to draw I'm going to go up here and I'm going to 
make it from within line, it's a tube now, and it's got to be at least... Let's make it two millimeters. Now, we're also going to go ahead and we're going to make it zigzaggedy in more than just one dimension. So, for example, this one. Let's move this over here. This point, we're going to bring it forward a bit. This point, backwards a bit. This point, also backwards. And this point, forwards. This point, backwards. This point stays where it is. This point goes backwards a little. And this point comes forward, just a little. So that when we look at it from a three-dimensional perspective, okay, it's looking like they're, they, some of them need to go a bit elsewhere. So we're going to select all of these. And we're going to play with them until we get some... Yeah, there we go. We want it as kind of balanced to the center as possible. Now, that's just our basic core bolt. We're going to go ahead. Well, let's grab this. Let's select them all. We're going to shrink them just a little bit on the Y. Oh, it doesn't. That's right. It doesn't do that. Eh. Okay. Now, auto smooth threshold of 10. No, of 100. Yeah, there we go. Collapse uh, into an editable poly. It is now no longer a line. It is now a polygon. <coughs> and what we're going to do, we have, unfortunately, some unusually shaped caps. So we're going to select those and shrink it down. Now only the caps of the bolt are selected, and we're going to delete them. Now, we select those, and we're going to chamfer them 0 0.001. And what that's going to do is that's going to create two edges, but one of them is very, very, very close to the other. And the reason for that is we like what the ends are. Now when I select just the open edges, and I hit collapse, basically, <laughs> excuse me, it's still almost exactly the same length, but now it's collapsed. So now, the next thing we do is we want to keep these segments. So I'm going to loop. I've selected one end. I then click ring. And it only selects the horizontal rings. It doesn't select any of the lines. We're going to give them a very tiny chamfer. Point zero zero one is good. Now, that's good here, but I think we want to taper it a bit. Now, what tapering will do is... Oh, no, we don't want that axis. There we go. It'll make it thicker near the hand and thinner where it's coming out. Collapse. Now the next thing we got to do is add on some additional bolts. Well, the problem with the shield is it's going to be pretty big. And you'd have to be, have a weird pose to be doing both. Because remember, most games only allow you to cast one spell in a round. I'm going to go ahead and mesh smooth it once, twice, three times a mesh smooth. And now, I'm thinking it's, yeah, we need to make it a bit more inflated. Simply because it will be difficult to print. Yeah. Now, I'm going to draw a couple more lines.
and I'm going to have to move them into position. Up here. And this one's coming off of out there, so let's bring it a little bit further forward and rotate it so that it's at an angle. We don't want everything to be parallel. That wouldn't be great. And lift it up a little. Uh, there. Now we we'll take these, bring them over. Okay. That one. No, it needs to come down to here. We're going to rotate it like that. And we're going to shrink its radius because it needs to be a little bit smaller. It'll be poly. This one. That's good. The back one here, that one needs to be kind of rotated a little. Okay, now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go back and reselect our basic bolt. Yeah, that's basic. We're going to attach all of these uh, other ones. Okay, now it's one big lightning bolt. But it's still not decent yet. So what we're going to do, we're going to select the main body and we're going to hide it and now hit Z and it zooms in on all four of these and we're going to select the at least one edge on each of these loop and then ring oh it didn't like didn't like that so uh yeah better yet let's select uh, let's uh select all the polygons i forgot to close off these tubes properly remember i had mentioned how they don't have good geometry in the caps yeah that's what's happening here so now, once again, we select all of them, and we chamfer them 0 0.001. Okay. Now we select all of them again, and collapse. There. Now let's all select a, a, a an edge on each of these. Loop and ring and chamfer 0 0.001 and then select these unhide the main mesh smooth do not apply to the whole thing one two now that gives us our very basic lightning bolt but I think it's a bit too wide. So let's narrow it like that. And then we're going to push on it. Now let's, let's rotate it a little this way and shrink it this way. Yeah, there we go. Now we're gonna push on it again because we want it to be thick enough to print. Now, that's our basic geometry. That's nothing but. This is not what's going to end up being used. We're going to export this. 
as bah, lightning export done delete and now we're going to bring it back into guess where people that's right seabrush now the firebolt's still in there what we're going to be doing is replacing the firebolt with the lightning bolt which is not a big thing now one thing that we need to do we need to go ahead and give it a bit more geometry now I'm going to bring in first the inflate because I'm going to inflate the base where it sits in the hand and the reason for this is because it was looking more like it, it needs to be more ball shaped so it's more like easier to, to, to wrap the hand around and now we're going to go ahead we're going to do something similar on each of these side the sides of this because it got flattened a little bit when we shrunk it this way we get to keep our uh, the new overall size but get to re-add the thickness you know because we're down with the thickness um, yes I did say that I am that disturbed um anyway good inflate there and there one thing we need to do about this to make it nice and lightning-y is first we need to blend it all back into one. So, let's go back to Dynamesh. Zero, five, twelve, now let's make it zero, one, twenty-eight. Dynamesh! Yeah, now we're going to shrink some of these points just a little bit by using the smooth tool. Oh, let's make it powerful. Yeah. We don't want to make them completely go away. We just want to make them appear to turn into points. Because lightning's pointy. <clears throat> then we're going to go back to our slash tool and we're going to just make it jagged and sharp as everywhere as we can lightning really doesn't have a thickness like this it's just electrons being discharged from a cloud this is actually representing the glow of the lightning not so much the lightning bolt itself. So we want it to catch edges, catch paint, catch light to further represent what it's doing. Yeah, because all this is is electrons from a static charge jumping off of clouds. So by doing this, we're getting a better nice jagged look okay now we're going to grab that snake hook remember that snake hook yeah that snake hook we're going to make it larger though and we're going to bring down the focal shift oh that's too big We're going to try and emphasize some of these corners here. Make it look more like lightning. And that's pretty good. <clears throat> Except it's still looking a little blobby. 
Blobby's bad. Blobby looks unprofessional. Don't be like Blobby. So what we're going to do is we're going to add in a negative slash where some of these elbows are. Try and give it a bit more negative detail. Okay. That's grooves and cuts and things like that place for the darker parts to store the uh, paint and to shadow to give more interest to the final product. And the more jagged and angular that lightning is, the more interesting it looks. And that's a bit better. <clears throat> it did not need as much work as the fireball did. So the next thing that we do is we're going to go ahead. We're going to smooth it out a bit. We're going to give it another Dynamesh. No, that wasn't good. We're going to give it a higher Dynamesh than that just so that we can then go back in and retopologize it. Now the reason why I did that Dynamesh is because some of the grooves that I cut just now caused parts of the mesh to overlap itself. That's not good. We don't want that. We don't want the overlapping itself stuff. There's only three prongs that really stick out, so it's the only ones we have to worry about when we make this as a prop. We should go ahead and inflate that hand base just a bit more. It's a bit easier for it to be held by our miniature. <coughs> now, instead of Dynamesh, what we're going to do, we're going to Z Remesh! Yay! Let's see what we get this time. Bing! And we got 10,000. Yeah, that's much better. Okay, so let's export this. Once again, back on top of itself. I know, I'm bad. I, I, I'm, I'm no good. And let's go back to 3D Studio Max. And we're going to import the lightning back in. And it loads right in position where it was. Now, once again, it's a little big. Let's go ahead. Let's shrink it just a little bit. Not, yeah, that should be, that's all we needed. And let's move that center pivot back up into the center of the ball. And then move it into position and rotate it. 45 degrees. So that's parallel to the palm. And we're going to take that pivot and we're going to put it back at zero. So that way we can mirror it. On that mirrored version, we're going to reset transform and then normalize it. There. What that basically does is it reorders what order the various polygons go in. Now file export selected lightning our hand export done file export and lightning L hand Done. 
Now, are y'all still awake? Am I the only one still left in here? You know, I see Priest with Knives and Brandon still awake. But basically what we have now, that was our lightning bolt. It doesn't really look like lightning because we need to be able to make it printable. That's about as close as we can get right now. Next up would be either our mystic generic arcane attack or the shield. And, you know, by shield I don't mean Captain America. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, Brandon, we just did the lightning bolt, we've done the fire bolt. Arcane bolt or shield? If y'all can do me a favor and get more people in here, I'd, I'd really appreciate it. I have noticed that every time I go through a ZBrush Dynamesh or re apologizing, yeah, I gain another 10 seconds of lag. Yay! Okay, the shield. That'll actually use some totally different techniques. So, what we're going to do for the shield, we're going to go ahead, we're going to zoom out, because we're going to need to be zoomed out. We go back to our geometry, go back to a sphere. And we're going to there we go. Make a big old ball. Now, why did I do this? Because I'm going to cut most of it off. And then make most of it do this. And then I'm going to duplicate it by I click on it and I drag down. Okay, then I'm going to take this one, this version, I'm going to make it even narrower. Okay. That's a little, bit, a little bit hollow. We need to make it also at least as far apart as that. Now this one, I'm going to invert the normals on. So we have a dish. It's Hmm. Let's see. Let's go ahead. Let's attach this and center the pivot. And it needs to be a bit more hollow, so we're going to do that. A bit more dish and dome like collapsal. And we need to reset the transform because we stretched it. <coughs> now, I'm going to select both of those edge loops except for one. I'll explain why in a second. And we're going to bridge. Okay. Then we're going to select just those two and bridge. The reason why I'm doing this is because they came from the same, a duplicated version of the same geometry. These particular things 
would not end up bridging by creating nice even polygons around the center like they did here. Instead, they twist and go n all sorts of ways. Like if you took it and rotated it 180 degrees, it would all be twisted up. Now, let's go ahead, smooth, one. We're going to select both these edges by looping. And we're not going to make these very sharp. Instead, we're going to make them somewhat rounded. Still visibly more rectangular than rounded, but at the same time, not very so. Okay, now we're going to select perfect. That's exactly where we want it, and we're going to ring. Oh, that's right, we can't do ring on a three-sided triangle. It only works on four. All right, we selected all of those in the center, because what we're going to do is we're going to connect them with two rings. Now the reason for two is because now we're going to convert it to a selection of polygons and we're going to shrink it down to there and we're going to bring it up. Because this is going to be what's coming out of the hand. Now we convert it to a vertex selects and then shrink it down to just the last vertex. Now we're going to select this, loop it around, chamfer, good enough. That is our basic shield shape, but it's not enough. What we need is we need to make it look like a magic shield. I'm going to mesh smooth it a couple times. Hmm, I didn't not I just noticed a problem with that. Let's go ahead and select these and shrink them a bit. I want to make sure that this is smaller than the palm because it will effectively plug into the palm. Okay. Now we're gonna export it as a shield. One thing about this shield. Uh, if you have an FDM printer, at this point I would actually suggest you print this uh, any miniature that uses this shield in a transparent fi uh, filament. It won't be transparent, but it will be more shiny, metallic-y, weirdy color. You know, like most of your typical... 3D printed uh, transparent thingies like um, like Hulk here. Hulk is uh, pretty solid, but he's transparent. Yay! And that would make the shield just look that much cooler. Now we go ahead. Let's go back into ZBrush. We're gonna. Oh wait, no, I have to make one quick step first. I can't show it to you because I don't... Oh! Fuzz butt, no! Not when I have my tablet in my lap. Little buddy, this is Ralph, you can tell because he's got the red collar. Ralph can often be a pain because he weighs a lot. Anyway, like I was going to say, I have to take it to another program really quick because it has to be what's called UV mapped. Oh, wait a minute. I forgot to do something. Yes, there's one other step I had to make. I had to make these separate objects. The reason being will become clear in the future. Because I have to make them separate groups. Because what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using a function of ZBrush called masking. And it's a lot easier to mask when something is, you know, able to be individually sectioned off. And give me just a second here. Let 
Then a ZBrush, don't split. Y axis, okay. There we go. Save. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Tools, vertices, weld. Okay. Save. Okay, let me save that. Okay, now I am going to be bringing it into ZBrush. So we import spell shield. Here is our shield. We're going to increase the geometry on it quite a bit because we have to for what we're about to do. Let's bring it up to, yeah, 3 million ought to do it. Yes, 3 million. Now, the next thing that we do is we go down, we go to the alpha. Import spell alpha. I had made this uh, earlier today. Let me go ahead and move my camera out of the way so you can see it easier. And what it does, it's effectively what it says. It looks like a magic circle. Let me put myself back up. Hey, I'm on top again. And hello, Swoopy. And hello, Outcast. Welcome. So now, let's go ahead and we are going to flip the alpha vertically. That's because that's because uh, ZBrush actually has this weird thing where it makes a negative. It, it all of its UVs are inverted. Now we're going to masking. Mask by alpha. Bing. We now have, hmm, that's not big enough. Bing. So open Photoshop, sorry, it's again something that you're not going to see. I'm basically just going to reduce some of the black space on the magic uh, circle image. Save as spell alpha 2. Okay. Now, we're going to load in spell alpha 2. And we're going to flip it. Now, when we mark mask by alpha, there, that covers most of it. However, we don't want the back to have this. So we're going to click on the back with a control shift. And look, the front vanished. So we now select the whole thing and now only the front's gonna have this now we go to deformation and what we're gonna do is we're gonna inflate that until it looks like yeah that should print that should be noticeable on the shield when it's printed so now when you cast this spell and your figure has it hanging in his hands, it'll actually look like it's got a little mandala on it, like the Doctor Strange spells in his show. The problem is, this is a three million polygon shield. We don't want that as the prop for our figures. I don't care who you are, how much RAM you've got. So the first thing we do is we dynamesh it. The reason for this is because we're going to be slightly smoothing out the layer. And right now, if we if we looked in, I hit polygon, you can see it has the same problem that we had before. These the edges here are only one or two polygons compared to many polygons in the face. So we dynamesh it. And it automatically calculates it out this time to 1.75 million. That's a lot. But it, it's enough for us to do what we need to do. Deformation. Polish. 100.
that is going to basically smooth out areas like inside the lines and everywhere that's erratic and ragged. There we go. We're going to do it one more time. Whee! Like I said, I mentioned if you want to plan this with print this with FDM, use translucent, and then paint the rest of the figure other than the shield. Do something similar with uh, uh, resin printers, although it'll end up being a lot cooler on a resin printer because this will actually be transparent green or whatever color that you print it out of. Alright, now, it's dynameshed. We need to... We're not going to use the Z remesher because Z remesher will not it, it'll lose a lot of detail if I remesh this all the way down so instead we're going to use the decimation master I'm gonna drop it down to custom 15k oh yeah 15k points still gonna be a high polygon object but As it slowly goes And it's taken a while. It's, uh, it's stuck on computing, please wait. So, let's frame it out. We're going to once again dynamic it, but this time at a smaller resolution. So hopefully, yeah, we're down to 429,000 polygons. So you plug in custom. It's a lot faster dealing with much smaller polygon counts. Oh yeah, there we go. Ring. There we go. It's 14,999 or 30,000 polygons. That's still relatively high, but it will actually print with some detail visible. So let's go ahead and export back to Spell Shield. And we go back to 3D Studio Max. Bing! Ooh. And then we're going to go ahead and bring the spell shield back in, right there. And once again, we're going to center the rotation. We're going to rotate it 45 degrees, just so you can see it actually has how far we're doing right above the gizmo. 45 degrees, so that it's then going to embed in the palm of the figure when it loads in. So that it's like coming from his you know, stop sign hand. Now you notice how large it is. That's basically because it's, you know, it's a, it's a magic shield. You want to stop everything coming at you. Ah! Now we're going to take, and we're going to move the pivot once more. Yes, can anyone guess what I'm about to do? Yes, that's right, I'm about to mirror it. So we have a version that can be loaded in on either hand. And reset selected and normalizing cycle, which has nothing to do with the normalizing cycle of metals, because I didn't have to heat it up to 450 Celsius. And file export selected. Spell shield. Our hand. Spell shield right hand. Export. Done. Delete that version. And now file. Export selected. Spell shield L hand. Because, you know, we want to make sure we keep the difference between which one's the right hand and the left hand. You know, because 
you know, I don't know about you, but I, I, I've kind of screwed that up before myself. And, yeah. Let's delete it. Now, file. That's, that's, that's. That's two bolts and a shield. Outcast, I don't ever want a sunroof. I've got no I don't like the wind in my hair. I don't I never roll down my windows. Okay. So the only thing left now is the arcane bolt. Yes, we've done a fire bolt, we've done a lightning bolt, we've done a shield spell, and now we're going to do the generic fill-in-the-blank element arcane bolt. I guess we could also do some kind of liquidy bolt for like acid spray or what have you, but that, that tends not to be that common. And usually if it's, it's, it's rare enough that it'll probably be unique to that character. Same thing with things like Thorn Whip. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to start off with the cylinder. And the cylinder is going to have a lot of height segments. We're going to go ahead and make the cylinder here. It's going to go up. It didn't go up high enough. There we go. And then we're going to move the pivot over here. Let's go ahead and move the whole thing to the there. Now we're going to mirror. Reset transform. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to convert it to an edible poly. And we're going to attach the other. And we're going to twist them. Oh, too far. We don't want... Not, yeah, we want more like... Uh, there. Now the thing is, this makes it actually a little bit too big. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to shrink it this way. And this is just our base geometry. Don't, don't, don't fret. And then we're going to mesh smooth. And then we're going to push to inflate it. It's collapse all. This is actually going to take the most sculpting of any of them because we're just starting with a basic bolt and going from there. Now we're going to give it a couple smooths more. In case you're wondering, it's around 20,000 polygons right now. Collapse all. And just so that we can keep track of which end is which, we're going to put a little sphere up near the top. That's also going to be where the hand is. Actually, that is a good idea. Let's go ahead and first we'll make this 32. We'll poly. Now, where's the X here? 13.381. Thirteen point three eight one. There we go. And then we're going to attach that and we're going to taper it just a little. Collapse all. And then we're going to export this. Oh, wrong one. File. Export selected. And we're going to call it simply 
arcane bolt. Export. We. Now, the next thing we gotta do is, of course, bring it into ZBrush. We still have our nice little spell shield here, but we want to switch that out for the arcane bolt. Now, the first thing we gotta do with the arcane bolt is we gotta raise that geometry quite a bit. Divide, divide, divide. Delete lower. It's 1.5 million polygons. And then dynamite it. We now have 76,000. With just one quick click. Now we're going to shrink the mouse. And once again, with my... With my... With my... 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 My appropriate brush. I am going to smooth out where it meets the sphere so that's more more like a single bolt twisting around itself than two bolts stuck onto a sphere I mean ask ask Frankenstein what it's like to have two bolts stuck on I mean he didn't even have a sphere to stick him on do you think that Frankenstein actually added anything for um, potential reproduction, or was he smooth as a cue ball? Alright, now what we need to do is we need to add some kind of like little energy bits here and there. So we're just going to grab and jerk out. I can't believe I said that. A few zappies. We want it to be kind of jagged, like the, the look of a cartoony explosion type zigzags. Now, once again, this might end up being a bit difficult to print. Uh, we need to because we want this to look like an, an a generic energy bolt. There we go. Now, the next thing is we want to keep it kind of spirally. Actually, right now it could also could almost be a liquidy, watery bolt like, you know, acid splash or something. So now what we do is we go ahead, let's go back to our slash, negative, we're going to draw in various random slashes down this. Because we want, again, we want it to be energy, not you know, uh, cotton candy or anything like that. So by adding on these slashes, which we're then going to refine in just a little bit, we're giving it more detail, more visible interest. Places for the paint and, you know, whether dry brush or, or wash, to dig in and give us a good amount of color variation. Now we're going to take the add, make it a little bit bigger, and we're going to 
slightly stroke across each of the high parts. And the reason that's too much, it's way too much. Let's lower the intensity quite a bit, yeah. Adding takes a lot oh, adding takes a lot less intensity than subtracting. And I don't know why. It's the way the brush works. And then Now, I realize that most of y'all don't have ZBrush, but there is a similar type of brush, I would assume, in all of the other major sculpting programs, including the free ones, you know, which would be Sculptress and Blender. I don't know about Mudbox. I did not like pl uh, playing with Mudbox, but that was a personal opinion of the program. It had nothing to do with its capability. Just it didn't, It didn't catch my... Uh, jaundiced eye the way ZBrush did. I also y'all probably don't know this but for a while there I was actually sculpting it, I didn't make much money but I was actually sculpting physical real world minis out of what the industry calls green stuff. There. Now what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and we're going to give it a small bit of a polish, which is under deformation if you remember. And polish basically smooths everything out. Bing. 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 Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab the move topological brush again. This time we're going to have a lot sharper point. And we're going to make it a bit bigger. That's too big. There we go. Zoom in. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab and drag out. That's too much. I'm going to grab and I'm going to drag out a bit on various spots to make this more of energy. Again, it's not... It needs more visual focus because it doesn't look like anything we know, so we got to make it look like something that we don't. Something weird, something unusual, something energetic. We I mean, who's to say what exactly uh, the energy of a baryonic superpower blast looks like? And the, again, the more details, the more points and grooves, the more places for paint to gather and give us our interesting little silhouettes. Okay. And what we have here is 76,000 polygons of energy. And I'm going to do one last thing. I'll make this real big. I'm going to grab the tip. I'm going to just do that so it stretches out just a little. Like it ha like it's just in the middle of firing and hasn't reached that far yet. Now, let's go ahead. We're gonna divide it a couple times. Delete. Oh, and let's say delete the lower, and we're going to Z remesh. It doesn't need another state of. And it's zero meshing in progress.
but I mean, perfect example of what I meant by who's to say what it looks like. In the books, the Harry Potter books, Avada Kedavra is described as being a green jet. But in the movies, it's got this weird kind of energy crackly zark around itself thing. It looks a lot cooler. So, we have 16,000 polygons. That's good enough for me. And we're going to export this. Export Arcane Bolt. Once again, I know I'm not doing an iterated save. That's on me. Now, the next thing we do, we go ahead and go back into 3D Studio Max. We also kind of poke our Shinju and get kitty kisses on the nose. Now, what we have to do now is we need to do everything that we did before. Bring it in, load it, make sure it's pivoted in the hand, and rotate it so that it's coming flat from the palm. Zerk. And then we got it. Okay, just a second. File. Import. Arcane Bolt. Yay. Pardon me. I'm right now having a, a minor sinus acting up, and it's kind of giving me a minor headache. Okay. So now that we've got it loaded in, what we need to do is we need to go ahead and recenter it and bring that center back up to the about there. Lower it a bit, move it, and rotate 45, come on, rotate 45 degrees. 45 degrees. And then just because, let's make sure we got it resting kind of just in the palm a bit. Now there's one other thing we're going to do just to make it a bit more cat, a bit more printable. We're going to give it just a little bit more of a push. Yeah. Collapse all. Now we're going to move that pivot back to zero, so that we or x of zero, so that we can mirror it. And we mirrored it. We reset the transform and normalize it. And we have our arcane bolts. File export selected arcane bolt R hand R for right export. And arcane bolt L hand L for left export done. Okay, so far we have created firebolt, lightning bolt, arcane bolt, and shield, but they're not really usable yet. Right now they're just raw geometry. So what we need to do, we need to go into one more program. We need to go into Daz Studio. And here, where it is, there it is, I need to go into our content, into my content library and load in 
the jointed base male. Here he is. Scene. File. Expand all. And here on the right, we have a list of the whole, all the list of body parts for this critter, for this, for this being, this entity, this manifestation proclamation upon which we will build a nation. Anyway, no nations. No, thank you. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to file. We're going to start. I'm only going to. I'm only going to demonstrate really with the. Uh, the shield, I guess. I'll, I'll do the shield. And I'll load in both the left hand shield and the right hand shield. Now, as you can see, it's, the spell is clearly visible on the surface. Now, what I'm going to do, you'll notice that it's set up kind of like how if you've ever written an index you know, you've got category subcategory subcategory it's a similar structure but in this case it's parent to child the hand is a child of the forearm but a parent of the first finger bone these spell shields will be parented to the appropriate hand so for example the this way that if I move his, say, upper arm, let's say I bend it up, it moves. Hey, look. I then bend his hand backwards. And hey, look. He's holding up a shield. Energy blast bouncing off. Yay. So now we have to save these in a format that from now on, whenever I load them in, they will automatically parent themselves to the hand. So, let's start with the right. File, save as, support asset, figure props assets. And I gotta move this into where the actual folder, and I really don't like that you can't see me doing this part. So, props, new folder, magic spell shield our hand and I'm saving it with the same oh, almost didn't get it right now what that does that saves the basic prop and since I don't need to save the hand pose, that's all I need to do to save that shield. And now, I could actually go in, and I'm going into my library, miniatures, base geo, oh, no fuzz. Let me, let me put this up first, fuzz. I don't need this anymore, my tablet, my Wacom. <laughs> I'd love it if they sponsored me. Um... I'm going to poses. Oh, come on. There we go. One of them is called Speedster. Wee. But if I take those left fingers parameters and change all of their bends to zero, change the thumb. No, oh, the thumb's bends are zero too. Change the hand to a bend backwards. It's a guy running away while he's casting a shield behind him to keep himself from getting turned into into fricassee. Yay! But I can also save the shield from here. All that matters is that it's parented to the hand. But let's not take any risks. Let's figure zero. Zero figure. Bing! There it goes. File, save as, support asset, figure props assets. Spell shield, L hand. Oh, file, save as, support assets. I've got to save that. Save as, support asset, figure prop assets. 
spell shield L hand. And it also needs the, the new thing and accept. Now, what, what's kind of funny is, let's say I bend this hand back and then bring his arm forward to be protecting himself by that shield. Well, actually that's too far forward because he needs to only be partially from the shoulder and the rest from the collar. Yeah, there he is. He's got his hand out and is holding up the shield. Now, let's let's ma let's make it not quite so opaque, just for the purposes of this little demonstration. Let's make it mirror, and let's make it uh, bright green. -y. And would be really funny is if somebody ever decided to make a troll mage. As a troll, I can't shield. Ha ha. And there we go. He has our, our, our shield casting wizardly troll. And with his other hand, he's going to go ahead. and be holding a club because I can do that people which are based geo props that's where where's the club right hand there it is yeah isn't that many many adventurers worst nightmare a troll casting magic anyway We got four props done, technically eight because it's one for each side. And got the shields at least parented to the figure and saved in a format that the program can recognize. Uh, if we create a wizard in the future, he has a nice arsenal of spells to call upon for the figure. If we create a priest who's renowned for being, in, you know, extremely defensive oriented instead of combat oriented, we've got a shield. If we've got a specific, you know, if we want to create a scenario, you know, one wizard sitting there with a little dagger in hand casting a shield, another wizard tossing off a fireball, and another one double fisting an arcane bolt. <laughs> yeah, that could be interesting, couldn't it? So, let's go back to here. I'm just checking. Hmm. Excuse me, I got hiccups. Okay. Now let's see. Did I have... No, it didn't even make it into the front page. Oh, well. I was just checking the 3D printing miniature subreddit. And, yeah. Eh. Okay. Uh, now, 
Sundays are the days I actually sculpt the figures. What I did today won't really show up yet in Thingiverse because I didn't make a creature or a character. Sunday. It will be up to the audience what figure I sculpt. I would prefer to do a character. I've done two weeks in a row where the Sunday sculpt was a monster. A deep one from uh, Call of Cthulhu, you know, the Cthulhu Mythos, Lovecraftian horrors. And the ghoul from Lovecraft, which is not an undead zombie that has more brains and eats bodies. It's... Lovecraft ghouls are alive. They are disgusting, filth-ridden, live in graveyards and eat dead bodies, but they're alive. And it's possible for a human to turn into a ghoul. They've got a long canine snout, digitigrade legs, two big clawed toes. They're, they're ugly. So, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and I'd rather do a character, a person. You know, a warrior... A barbarian, a druid, a mage, something along those sorts. Possibly a combat veteran from the future, a diplomat, a superhero, or a supervillain. Maybe even something you might recognize. But preferably not. I'd actually prefer not to do anything that's really copyrighted. The Lovecraftian beasties were pushing it. Both of them have become generic enough that it's on the edge and it's not great Cthulhu himself. But you know, when I the further I get away from the copyright line, the more comfortable I feel. So Goliath? Which Goliath? The superhero Goliath? The guy who fought David? Um, the absolutely and utterly copyrighted gargoyle? Yeah. Like I said, I want to try to avoid copyrights. Because, you know, the whole... The, the problems with 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 legalities there. So which Goliath do you want me to do? Oh, the D and D race of Goliath. The thing about a Goliath, all they are is a large human with a weird paint job. There's not that much different on the scale we're dealing with about a Goliath from a human. Come on. Good girl. So, it, it's... I want to do a character, not a race. Races are for, are, 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 are for like, Thursday nights. Now, last time I did a troll and a sci-fi device. So, yeah... And yes, I do have some affectionate cats. Oh, there we go. Uh, priest, uh, races are for Thursday nights. I'm trying to figure out what we're going to do on Sunday night. The past two Sundays in a row, we've done creatures. I want to do a character. You know, Dwarven Berserker. Halfling Bard. Something to that effect. Actually, we're going to have to wait on Bards because I don't have any musical instruments for them to hold yet. But Halfling um, Monk. Kung Fu Halfling. Whoa! That sort of thing. And Kenku are, are older than D&D. They're one of the two more common bird races in Japanese folklore. Kenku and Tengu. 
But you, could, you don't have to worry about it now, uh, Priest. We can worry about it on Sunday. Hopefully I'll have more people than tonight. Tonight was kind of low on the, on the, on the viewport scale. Anyway, it is now 10 till 10 central time. I've been doing this for not quite two hours now. And I will probably go ahead and I will be shutting down the stream here in just a minute. And just as an FYI, I am in fact saving these on my hard drive. And after the broadcast is over, not only is it still available on Twitch for two weeks, it will also be available on uh, YouTube. I have a YouTube channel, as you have seen, you know, right, right over here. I think it's is it the upper one or the lower one? Yeah, it's the upper one. And the lower one has my Discord and my Thingiverse page. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold up my hand, and I'm going to start counting down. And when I see my hand on the screen reach one, I'll be locking out. That's basically to make sure that I've said everything I needed to say, and, you know, the shutdown happens after I've said everything I need to say. So, that is a, a five, a four, a three, a two, one. Bye-bye.